Welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Lab Setup and Platform Emulator Configuration. So in this lesson, we're just going to give you an overview of my lab environment. So I've got a couple of labs here. I've got three, well, two physical labs and a, and a virtual lab. My first physical lab is in Charlotte. So if you can't tell by my accent, I'm from North Carolina, and I've got two local labs, the first one being in Charlotte and the second one in Greensboro. And I'll give you a quick overview of those and kind of explain why I'm using two different ones. Then we'll go through an in-depth walkthrough of Cisco's UCS platform emulator, Cisco uh, UCSPE as I call it, and kind of the function of that. That's my virtual lab. That's something that I can run in a VM and I can play with and within reason do most things that I need to do. So a lot of the labs that you'll see when it's kind of a management interface lab, we'll do it in UCSPE. Nice thing there is no physical gear needed and you can do it anytime you want to. So we'll give you an overview of that. And then I'll show you how to use the PE, and then we'll go through a lab of actually deploying and using the VM. So with that, let's get started. First, an overview of my lab. So I understand not everybody has a hardware lab. It takes a lot of equipment to do what I'm kind of doing in some of these lessons in a physical environment. I mean, you've got to have a full-on install of UCS. You've got to have interconnects. You've got to have at least one chassis. You've got to have at least one, probably more than one blade to do most of this. Then you have to uplink that to a physical ethernet environment. If you're going to do fiber channel and boot from SAN, you need to do it to a kind of a fiber channel environment. Well, mostly a fiber channel environment. We'll talk about that later. And then also have a fiber channel uh, connected array. So, you know, as I'm, as I kind of, you know, looking around, I mean, it can be a hundred thousand dollars worth of gear just to have a lab set up for UCS. So, you know, that's why I like the idea of the platform emulators that I'll talk about later. But, during the course, I'll be using three labs, and I'll, and I'll tell you if I'm using a lab for a specific reason, but I've got a lab in Charlotte, lab in Greensboro, and then the UCSPE. Each one of these offers some different options, so a lesson may require specific hardware, or I work for a reseller. I work for Vero. We're a big reseller and a partner, and a lot of times my engineers need to kind of test something in one of the labs, so they'll be using a lab, and I won't have access to it. Thankfully, I've got two installs of UCS, you know, I'm fairly lucky there, so if something's tied up, I have access to another. So the Charlotte Lab is what I consider to be my lab, and it's the one that I'll do most lessons on in the course. And the reason I say my lab is I'm responsible for the Charlotte one, and so I know who's using it, who and they're not, things like that. I know what state it's in, so I'm, I'm very comfortable. To you, it doesn't really matter, but this lab is uh, pretty simple. It has two 6120 fabric interconnects, and I know we haven't gone through the components of UCS yet, but those are the first generation 20 port interconnects, and in the picture there on the right, those are those two one you guys sitting right there. I have two chassis, here's one, here's the other, eight, and a total of three blades. And if you notice something odd, three of my blades are in one chassis. At the time of the picture, I didn't have power into the other chassis. But with UCS, it doesn't matter. We'll talk about this later, but one chassis, four chassis, ten chassis, spreading blades amongst them are all in one. It's really the same thing. We don't manage the blades any different, so it, there's no harm done there. Along with this, for the Ethernet side of the house, I'm using Nexus 5010 switches for 10 gig Ethernet. For fiber channel connectivity, I have a Cisco MDS 9124. And for storage array, I have an EMC CX3 SAN. So it's a very well self-contained kind of environment, really good for doing almost anything that I need to do. The other lab is at our Greensboro facility, kind of our headquarters. And the, the reason I use this lab is it has two of the 6248 fabric interconnects. These are the second generation 48 port. Terrible picture, but you can see those guys right there. Along with those, I have a single chassis with two blades in it. Ethernet side, I've got a Catalyst 3750. Fiber channel, again, an MDS9124. And the array is a little bit newer EMC NS120. So pretty good. The reason I kind of flip back and forth, even though the labs are very similar, is if I want to show you the 6248s, I'll use this lab. When we're doing network configuration, when I do an example of Nexus, I use Charlotte. When I do Catalyst, I use Greensboro. So usually you don't need to worry about jumping back and forth in labs. And again, I'll let you know if there's a reason or you know something you need to be aware of. And then there's Cisco UCSPE. So the platform emulator is really neat. You know, hats off to Cisco for providing this tool. It's an excellent emulator of the UCS environment. And in fact, 
it runs the same UCS Manager code as the real Fabric Interconnects. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit lagging on release schedule, like they've recently released the 2.0 UCS PE, which is probably six weeks behind the 2.0 release of UCSM. But, you know, 2.0 was a major release, so I, I give them that. Again, it's a really great tool. So the primary focus is for developers to test plugins and other add-ons. As we'll learn in later lessons, you know, UCSM is very extendable. It's got a good API, XML kind of format, so you can dump stuff out, change it, import it in, etc. And that's what UCSP is really for. But it makes a great uh, tool for lab and test environments. So you can spin it up, log into it just like you would a real environment, look at it, make changes, you know, just kind of get a good feel for how to manage a UCS infrastructure. An even cooler feature in some of the later versions is I can point it as a fit at a physical install of UCS. So if you already have UCS installed and you want to, you know, kind of uh, replicate that configuration into your virtual environment here, you point it, it pulls in the information, and it builds out the environment in PE just like your physical. Very, very, very cool. Especially cool because the hardware configuration component of UCS PE is a little bit cumbersome. And by that I mean it can be very cumbersome. So it's a lot easier if you can just point it to a physical install instead of building it up yourself. Being that it's an emulator and being that it runs in a virtual machine, there are some limitations. There are no physical, there's no physical hardware, so there's no blades. There's emulated kind of blade-like things, so we can assign service profiles and look at them and poke and prod, but I can't boot windows on it, anything like that. So it gives you the management environment, but not the actual servers. What I'd love to see is like, a UCS PE with VMs for blades and then you could start spinning those up but you know I doubt that'll ever happen but I think that would be really neat. Current versions of the PE have a GUI for hardware configuration. Early versions there was uh, all that was done via text console and while I'm complaining that it's a cumbersome process it's a whole lot better than it used to be. So I'll, I'll show you all that here in just a minute. Deploying the UCS emulator is pretty simple. For this course, most of the time I'm going to be using the 1.4 version of UCSP. That means it runs the 1.4 UCS Manager version. Cisco recently released, as of you know, this recording, the 2.0 version. That's what I'll show you here in the lab. And the reason I'm doing that, I don't want to confuse you. Really, there is no confusion because UCSM 1.4 and 2.0 are very similar on the GUI side, on the interface side. But my guess is that you know when you're taking or going through this course you're going to download the latest version odds are that's going to be based on 2.0 so that's what I'll be using here in the lab. The UCS PE is available from Cisco's developer site again it's for Cisco dev testing but you can go grab it you need a CCO login those are easy they don't cost anything you don't need special access you don't need a smart net contract for UCS or anything like that anybody can go and download PE so you go there you grab it uh, my suggestion is to grab the latest version and download it. They will have the older versions in the archive, but go ahead and grab the latest. It downloads as a VMware virtual machine. Uh, you can run it using VMware Player, Workstation for Windows, Fusion for Mac, or if you have a vSphere environment, you can do that there. If you, have, if you don't have any of these, first of all, VMware Player is free. So if you don't have any of these, Player for Windows is absolutely free and it runs uh, pre-existing VMs, you just can't create VMs with it, well, you don't need to do anything with PE, so it works just fine. But if you want to deploy it into another virtual, another hypervisor, Zen, Hyper-V, something like that, you'll need to probably convert it. I've never done that. Again, player's free. Um, I use Fusion, but uh, if anything can read in kind of a VMware VM, it should work. You know, no warranties expressed or implied or anything like that, but you can give it a shot, else run it under something like VMware Player. So when you go and you download PE, you're going to download it in what's called a 7-zip. It's a newer format of zip, so if you don't have something that unarchives 7-zip, you will also need that. Plenty of tools, free tools out there to unarchive that. Starting the emulator depends on which hypervisor you're using. For something like Player Fusion Workstation, you can just do File Open, point it to the VMX file in the archive and off you go or you can even double click on the VMX file and it'll boot it up. vSphere is a little different due to the sparse disk files that are used in the package you can't just copy the files over and import it into the vSphere environment. What you have to do is you have to go get vCenter converter 
and convert and use it to import the VM. When you use that tool, it'll expand those disks into kind of thick provision disks and it'll import just fine. So once you import it, just confirm your network settings and you're good to go. It's very simple, very easy, and the vCenter converter is free and available on VMware's site. When you boot the VM, you'll see a Linux kind of console. So it is running on top of Linux, and by default, it'll DHCP to get an IP address. And we can change that, so once it boots up, if there is no DHCP, you can still log into the console and change network settings. You can also do things like restart the emulator or reset it back to defaults from the console, and I'll show you that in the lab here in just a minute. So the UCSP is just like a real UCS environment from the client side. And I know we haven't gone over that yet, uh, we will later, but to kind of give you a little bit of spoiler, it requires Java 1.6 Java runtime. So you need the 1.6 JRE, there's a link to it on the UCS manager page if you don't already have it. And an odd thing is that as of the 2.0 release, it requires Firefox or Chrome. The reason for that is everything works until you get to the hardware configuration. And then it pops up and says, by the way, you need kind of a Mozilla-based browser. This doesn't work in IE anymore. So I happen to be using IE, and I'm like, well, that's awfully weird. But you need to go get Firefox or Chrome to do the actual hardware configuration, just FYI. To run it, you'll just point your browser to the IP given in the text console that I'll show you. It brings up the web page. You may have to accept a SSL certificate warning. And then you can log in. The default login is admin, admin. Uh, you can see on the screenshot here, to the left is a configuration options in this left frame. On a real UCS install, you just see this. On the PE, you see this, and that's where we do things like the hardware configuration if you wanted to add blades or chassis. We can also make some other option changes. You can change the network from there, assuming you know it's got a usable IP so you can bring the GUI up. But pretty much once it's stood up, everything else can be done via the web interface. So in this lab, we will first by, start by deploying the UCSP EVM. And we're really not going to deploy it. The reason being is I've already got it imported into my vSphere lab. I'm doing this in a VM in Fusion, so I couldn't run player inside of that. So I went ahead and imported it in, and I'll show you what to do when we first boot. We'll boot the VM, configure network settings, show how to do the virtual hardware configuration, and log into UCS Manager and show you how everything works. So with that, let's get started in the lab. So we'll go ahead and tap over to my vSphere environment. The lab is pretty simple. It's a three node cluster with VMware. A bunch of VMs running here. If you see, you can tell I'm a Transformers fan because of my naming standard. And the VM in question is UCSPE. If we look at the summary tab, it's a Red Hat Linux VM, one vCPU, one gig of RAM, and only about seven gig of hard drive space. So it's not a very resource intensive VM by any stretch. So now we'll go ahead and power this guy up, look at the console, and you'll see kind of a Linux boot system here, and off it goes. So this will take a little bit of time, especially the first time you boot this. I found it takes longer. I guess it's setting up the database. But go ahead and just give it a little while, and when it's done, you'll get a screen with kind of a, a login prompt. And on the screen with the login prompt, it's going to give you two usernames and two passwords. So it goes ahead and gives it to you right here. That way you don't forget. But uh, the two ones are, the first one is going to be used for basic configuration, like network changes or resetting the database. The second one is, uh, I believe, the CLI user uh, login. And what that is, is that's actually like logging into a Fabric Interconnect. We'll see this in later lessons, but you can SSH and, or console into the Fabric Interconnects and get into the command line of UCSM, and that's what that's emulating. When you log in, you're going to see, it's going to say, hey, I don't support some things like connecting to local management. Local management, as again we'll learn in a later lesson, is basically talking to the underlying Nexus operating system in XOS on the interconnect. It doesn't support that. It's only emulating UCSM. So you can use it for some things, but not for everything. So keep that in mind if you try to do those. But for the most part, it's 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 very powerful, robust, and lets you, you know, really work with the system without having to have the hardware. So as soon as this boot, we'll go ahead and log in, take a look at the network settings, and then jump over to the GUI. Okay, menus up. So what we see here is a couple of things. First of all, at the top, we've got the UI URL, which shows you the IP address. Then we've got the logins here, config for standard configuration of the emulator. And again, as I mentioned, CLI user for the underlying UCSM CLI.
So let's go ahead and we'll log in as config. So config, config, and we get another menu. A couple of things here, starting at the top A, we can view and configure the network settings if you want to change the network configuration, we do that there. B, restart the UCSP with the existing settings, so don't change anything, just reboot us. C, it restarts it when forces a database reset, so it's going to reset the configuration database. So if you want to take it back to factory default kind of thing, that's what you would use. Then there's a factory reset, a reboot, and a shutdown. So if you want to shut down the VM, you're going to do K, and X will log you out. And real quick, you need to shut down or the reboot because this does not run VMware tools. I wish they would add that. Hopefully they will at some point. But right now, you can't really just do a graceful shutdown or restart from vCenter. So let's jump back to the console. Look here. Choose A to change the network. And it's going to dump out and basically an if config of Ethernet 0. If you're familiar with any sorts of a Unix, you'll recognize this output. But it's basically saying, do you want to change this? I'll say yes. Do you want to use DHCP? I'll say no. Put in an IP address that I want to use. That's not right. Netmask, default gateway, and it'll reset the network interfaces. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and log into the UI interface. So we're back to the menu, and this time I'll just X out and take us back out. So now we can jump over to our web browser. We'll use Firefox and log into the IP 192.168.200.176. 176. And here we go. What you've got is the UCS Manager login screen. So here on the right is the standard login. You can launch UCS Manager to launch the Java application. If this was the real deal, we'd be able to hit launch KVM Manager and go to the KVM for a blade. But since it's not, we can't. There we go. Over on the left is our option or configuration frame. Couple of things. First of all, UCS Manager Home is where we're at. Then we've got things like Managed Object Browser, XML API Docs, Schema and Samples. These are great if you're a developer. I, however, am not, so I find this stuff to be extremely boring. But if that's what you're doing, there you go. Me, I stay over here on the home screen. Down at the bottom are the two things that we can adjust. Let's start with emulator settings. So the first one is status summary. Wait for that to pop up, and it's going to give you a list of what the configuration is right now. You can't change any of this from here. We'll change it down here on these options, but this is just giving you an overview of how everything is set. So now that we have a IP address on the thing and we can get to the UI, you can change the IP again from here within the web interface. So enable DHCP, change my IP information, try to do a ping test, things like that. Then there's high availability. High availability is really simple. How many fabric interconnects do you want? One or two? Unless you have a very specific reason for only using one, leave it on two for dual fabric. Also, you'll see this warning a lot on these settings. Changes to these settings do not take effect until UCSPE services are restarted with a DB reset. If you log into this and do all sorts of weird, you know, configuration changes, not really weird, but you make a lot of configuration changes, and then you decide, I want to try it with a single interconnect, you're going to have to reset the database, so you're going to lose a lot of that. Make all your changes and your config settings first, then start working with the emulator. Don't do it the other way around. Database persistence. When you restart the PE, do you want the database to stay, or do you want it to be reset? You just at that right here. Probably want to preserve it, just depends on what you're doing. Startup URL, you can have the startup uh, local startup inventory, which is what is the default. You can actually point it to another instance of UCSPE and pull inventory or configuration from there. Then we've got Fabric Interconnect, number of uplinks. This says how many uplinks do you want to simulate to the network core. By default, it simulates one. You can also have it do two. That's two from each Fabric Interconnect. Then NTP configuration. Basically, if you just want it to pull time data down from NTP, you can check that box and apply it, and it'll sync time with the NTP server. Again, it's an emulator, but if you're doing real testing, you know, if you're really working on testing something and you need to make sure that time synchronization or time stamping was important, you want to make sure and set that. 
If you're just playing in the emulator looking at the management interface, yeah, I mean it doesn't hurt anything, but you don't have to set it. Then we have hardware inventory. So once you've made all your settings here and decided that's how you want it configured and you restart it and you reset the database, you can come to hardware inventory. Two options I'll start at the bottom. First is hardware catalog. Hardware catalog just says what does the emulator know about? Which blades, which modules, which dims, things like that. Here's a list of the blades. You may find that there's a blade missing. Sometimes I see that there's like no M2 for the 440, uh, but most of the others are there. There's an M2 230, 250, 200. They should all pretty much be there. CPU, here's all the supported CPUs, and you don't do anything here. So it's not like I'm dragging, clicking. It's just a list of what the emulator knows about. CPU, DIMM modules, disk drives, I.O. adapters for the blades, fans for the chassis and the interconnects, and power supplies for the chassis and interconnects. So if you're like, I wonder if this thing supports the new B230M3 yet, you can come in here and look. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't. So you'll, you'll know not to, not to go looking for it. To actually make changes to the inventory, we do startup inventory. And the name kind of gives it away. You can't make changes on the fly. So I can't slot a blade in. Even though I can slot blades in all the time hot in a UCS environment, we can't really do that here. you got to reboot it for that. Now, one nice thing I've noticed about 2.0 over the 1.3.1.4 that I've used in the past is it goes ahead and starts you off with a chassis full of blades, not just two of them. That's nice. If you want to play around with a full chassis of blades, you've already got it. It kind of picks and chooses the ones for you, but at least they're already there. You can see the list there if I expand these things out. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of this interface because it's not fantastic. What you do is you drag and drop things from the bottom into things at the top. So I'm going to simulate adding a chassis. There's some options up here, saving configurations, exporting as, X, as XML. If you want to export it out, make changes and import it. Restart emulator with this setup. So once you make a change, you can hit that button and it'll restart, take a few seconds and come back up with your new configuration. Import equipment from live UCS. So if I click that, it asks me for a URL and a login and password to the other UCS environment and it'll pull it in from there. So if you've got a live environment already, just have it pull in from that. Import XML file. Notice here we exported. Here's where we import. Load a saved configuration or add a new chassis. So I'm going to add a new chassis. What's my ID? By default, chassis ID 1 is already taken. So I'm going to make this 2 name. The default one is called Chassis 1. They have the same amount of imagination that I have, so I'm just going to call it Chassis 2. Give it a second to add, and there we go. So let's see. It's got our fabric extenders already. It's got our serial number already. It doesn't have any fans or power supplies, so we start there. So we need to do a couple of chassis power supplies. Let's see if I can give us a little bit more room here. Blade server chassis power supply. So we drag one up. Which slot number? Slot number one. Let's say you want to do four of them. Another one, slot number two. Slot number three. Slot number four. Then we want to do fans. So for blade chassis, we want to do, say, eight fans. Slot number one. Slot number two. Are you starting to understand why I said it's a very cumbersome process? Because you have to do this every time. I'm not going to keep doing that. But let's say you want to add a blade. B200 or 250M2. I'm sorry, that's an M1. Let's do B200M2. Which server slot? One through eight? One. And then it added. If we scroll down, we see it's added right there slot one. There's nothing in it. If we compare that to this, it's got CPU, it's got DIMMs, it's got IOS, it's got hard drive. We have to drag and drop every one of those. If you want to put 12 DIMMs in this B200 through the GUI, I have to drag it 12 times until it's slot one through 12. It's CPUs, drag two of them, slot one and two. IO adapters, slot one, etc. for every blade. That's why I'm saying it's an extremely cumbersome process. There are some things here. You can drop servers over here and have them kind of in a, in a ready-to-go stash, as it calls them. But it's an extremely cumbersome process to do this. That's why I like the fact it starts you off with eight. 
And if you can point it to a physical environment, absolutely do it. So I'm just going to delete this chassis. Yes. And we're back. So it's not a great thing here. I'd love to have some sort of a spreadsheet like interface where I could punch that in or maybe, you know, just an XML template that I could use. You know, maybe I you could dump that out, look at it and understand it and import it back in. Point I'm trying to make is it can be a cumbersome process, so just kind of be warned about that. You can also create blades in here that are not functional. You can create blades without RAM and reboot the system and it's going to come up as faulted in the UCSP, which if that's what you're trying to emulate, great. But if you want a working environment, that's not going to work. So, now that all that is said and done, we've I've showed you how to bring up the VM, configure the network, configure the basic emulator settings and hardware. Let's take a look at UCSM itself. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch the UCS manager and we will open with Java. Just a little bit of an FYI. Make sure you're running the latest version of Java, especially with this UCS PE20. Um, I had a problem earlier uh, setting this lab up to where the version of Java that I had, and I don't remember what build it was, a JRE 1.6, worked fine against the 1.4, did not work against the 2.0. It just, I'll show you, but basically you would never get the login screen. So I would get this, then I would get an SSL certificate warning, and then I wouldn't get anything else after it. So just a, just a heads up that you may need to update. There's that, and I'll say always trust, or it's going to ask me a couple more times, so I'll say yes to that, and go ahead and go on. And here's the login box that I get now that I updated my Java. So as I said, it's admin, admin, enter, and we will launch the UCSM applet. So I'm not going to go too far into UCSM, mainly because we've got a whole lesson on that, but I just want to show it to you. One thing you will notice, though, well, you're not going to notice it yet, but you'll notice later, in the lessons when I'm using 1.4 is that I comment on a couple of things like the interconnects like interconnect B on 1.4 has an odd status it's not subordinate like it's supposed to be by default there's a bunch of yellow box warnings things like that one thing I like about this new version of 2.0 is it's cleaner default install doesn't have as many warnings and flags as the default of the older version so that's one reason I want to show this to you and it's my recommendation that you use the latest PE that's available at the time. Don't worry about what we're using in the lessons because, again, things really haven't moved around like they have in the older versions of UCSM where we went from 1.1 to 1.2 to 1.3. Now they're pretty stable. You're not going to see big changes in the GUI, and so I suggest that you run the latest. But that's it for the platform emulator. Download the VM, unarchive it, run it in your hypervisor of choice, boot it, set the network configuration, log into it to the GUI, make any changes you want to change to how the emulator runs, restart it with the reset of the database, set up your inventory of hardware if you change it, you got to use the restart option there, and then you just point your browser back again on the UCS Manager home uh, outside in the browser, and you will then just log in as admin admin. So probably take you 15 minutes without me walking you through it or 10 minutes something like that it's very easy to do and gives you a great kind of a test or you know admin or training interface to UCS manager so with that let's jump back over to the slide deck so that's it for this lesson pretty simple don't you think we started with an overview of the lab I showed you my Charlotte lab and my Greensboro lab which both have UCS they both have fiber channel storage and some variant of an EMC array and really the difference are Charlotte has a 6120s, Greensboro has 6248 interconnects. A little different on the Ethernet switching. So in the end, you'll probably never even notice except when I'm talking about the newer interconnects. The meat of this lesson was really around the UCS platform emulator, PE. So showed you how to download the VM, unarchive it, spin it up, do network configuration and all that. And really that's what you need to focus on because the majority of the lessons we, you can follow right along with PE. That's the whole point of this is I want to do something that you could follow along. Now, sometimes we have to deviate. Sometimes I have to show you things on physical gear. But probably 90 to 95% of what we do in the lessons, you can absolutely do on the USCS PE, which is nice. It's nice because you may not have gear yet. You may have gear coming in that you don't have. Or you may have gear that you can't really do this on. So maybe you want to test some things out on the emulator without affecting production gear. So it's a great, great tool for that. 
So hopefully that's good. It gets you set up on a good base. You should be ready to start on the next lesson. So with that said, let's get started. I'll see you on the next one.